Whatever you do, don't have back surgery. How many times have you guys heard something like that? It's because a lot of problems in the spine can get misdiagnosed and therefore treated incorrectly. Listening to patients and being a good diagnostician is so important in spine surgery. I presented the case yesterday of a 38-year-old man who came to my office with back pain. He's had back pain for a number of years and he actually broke his back about 10 years ago. He had an L4 fracture that was treated with a brace and he states after about a year or two of being treated in the brace, all of his pain went away. However, over the past few years, he's had recurrent lower back pain. His iliac crest is here and his lower back pain was slightly lower, but on both sides. So if we look at a model of the spine, the iliac crest represents the same level as L4 and L5. So if we go below that, the two things that could cause pain below that area is typically L5 and S1 or the SI joints, which many of you guess. His x-rays that I showed you of his lumbar spine showed the healed fracture of L4. However, it also showed significant degenerative disc disease at L5-S1. Now, I know the answer to his pain, so I'm a little biased, but I agree. This fracture looks really bad, but in addition to that fracture, his L5-S1 disc is almost bone on bone, and his MRI confirmed the same thing. He has degenerative disc disease at L5-S1 with that healed fracture at L4. In addition to that, there is no compression noted of any of the nerves in the spinal canal. A little bit of giveaway is that I told you that all of his back pain went away once his spine fracture healed. Once a patient heals from a fracture of any sort, they usually have a baseline amount of pain from that fracture, and it doesn't usually get any worse unless something new is going on. Many of you guys guessed SI joint pain, but it's rarely bilateral unless it's some type of inflammatory condition like an ankylosing spondylitis or some type of autoimmune disorder. Degenerative disc disease is where your disc is injured and over time it starts to lose its water content and shrink. Here you have a normal height disc and then over time it can start to kind of shrivel up and become more bone on bone and that can cause pain. SI joint pain or sacroiliac pain is usually a diagnosis of exclusion. So I always try to exclude lumbar pathology before making that diagnosis because L5S1 and SI joint pain are very similar. Also very similar to pain at L4 and L5. Therefore, after examining the patient, listening to his clinical complaints, and seeing the response he had to numerous different treatment options, my working diagnosis was L5-S1 degenerative disc disease. Even though his L4 looks ugly, it healed and he did fine after it healed. I didn't feel that I needed a confirmatory test, but if there was any doubt, you could always perform a procedure called a discography. Basically, that's where we can place a needle into the disc itself and pressurize it with liquid or saline. And if there is any tear in the disc, the saline will leak out and reinitiate the patient's pain, therefore confirming that we have pain from that degenerative disc. Think of it like pressurizing a tire and seeing if there's a hole in it. Same concept. Okay, so he's 38 years old and we need to fix this degenerative disc. How can we do it? Please don't say lumbar fusion. Any patient under the age of 60 with no facet pathology and degenerative disc at L4, L5, or L5-S1 should be absolutely considered a potential candidate for a lumbar disc replacement. What's that? In a healthy person with a pure discogenic issue, the disc is meant to move, but over time that disc starts to lose its range of motion. So what we want to do is preserve the range of motion. He's 38 years old. We do not want to fuse his spine. If we fuse this patient's L5 and S1 and this no longer moves, it's going to cause excess strain on these other two discs, which have already been exposed to trauma with his old burst fracture. Here's a great video that shows how we insert the disc replacement at L5 S1 or at L4 and L5. Here's the before and after imaging showing the disc replacement. Now what you see is the foraminal height or where their nerves exit is severely collapsed on the pre-imaging and after surgery we got great height restoration of that neural foramen as well as correction of his spine deformity. He did phenomenal after surgery and all of his back pain resolved after just a few weeks. Another case of patient focused and compassionate care and remember to always listen to your patients. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another cool case.